Day 13. Time approximately 6.45 p.m. Location. The Memorial Northern Picnic Area. Big 52, South Branch. A mare and a stallion trotted along the Big 52 carrying assault rifles. The mare was wearing heavy security barding, while her companion used a mix of various metal plates welded together into what seemed like a bad attempt at making a scene costume for the Unicorn of Oz school recital. I still don't know why we can't have stayed in Tunneltown. It's way more defensible than anything past the Sugar Top Yow! Trigger Happy ja hit jammed gun on the head. Sure, but leave two thirds of the Big 52 in the herd's hooves? I can't believe you're that selfish or stupid. The stallion looked away. I'm not selfish. I. I'm worried about you. I don't want you to risk your life like this. A single glare from the mare had been all it took to make Jammy stop talking for half a minute. But a pony in love is a stubborn pony. We should at least stop for the night. The memorial isn't very far from here. All right, lazy hooves, you win. Jeez. Do you know that you are a royal pain? Sugar Happy groaned. Good stuff said that the town was deserted, but I guess it'll offer some better cover than a tent. The large monument the equestrian fallen seemed to fade away with the evening light, disappearing right in front of the approaching ponies. Day 13. Time approximately 7 p.m. Location, the Memorial Southern Picnic Area. Big 52, South Branch. As soon as the helmet was fully restored, a pink dot appeared in the middle of his display and began to blink. System successfully rebooted. All functions restored. Diagnostic system is online. Subject 001. Puppy smiles. Female earth pony. Subject deceased. Condition stable. All clear. Puppy slowly opened her eyes. Still sleepy. First thing was first. She had to determine where she awoke. Ah, it wasn't a bad dream. The bare hills and the dead trees were still all around her. This wasn't the foal's room. Sighing, the filly in yellow got up and tried aligning with the arrow on the compass. But something got her attention. Hey, Mr. Voice. What's that? Analyzing. Tank wreckage. Threat level, none. Not the bully bot, silly voice. Puppy sighed and trot towards the object of her attention. This blinking thing. Analyzing. Shortwave portable communicator. Researching frequency. Decrypting code. New communication channel detected. Receiving call. Yay! A phone call! Let me take it. Please, please, please. I love answering the phone. Puppy cleared her voice. Ahem. <laughs> Hello, pretty pony. This is me. Mom's not at home. A surprised and angry feminine voice came from the other side of the call. And who the fuck are you? Where's Lucky Charm? Yay, guessing game. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Who's Lucky Charm? I know a pony named Lucky Strike. Is that okay? The communication was abruptly interrupted, leaving Puppy a little surprised. Ah, stupid phone pranks. Oh well, don't get angry, or they'll win the game. Puppy shrugged and trotted away. Attention, incoming call. Opening communication. Without even giving Puppy time to reply, the same voice from before started talking rapidly. Okay, listen up, fuckers. I think this frequency isn't safe anymore. But the boss is gonna fuck me hard if you don't turn that fucking tank south and bring your fucked, drug-filled asses back right now. You got it, Lucky? I'll repeat that. Tell Gray and Bleedy to take that tank back right now. This is the last time I'm asking politely. <laughs> Pretty Pony says funny words. Puppy giggled. If this wasn't a phone prank, it was fun. What the? You again? Fuck. The communication closed for a second time. Puppy tilted her head. That was weird. Maybe we should go away? Affirmative. Primary objective is not at this location. Attention. Incoming call. Opening communication. 
The same voice as before started talking again. Lucky charm. Lucky charm. This is Ponyfort come in. Puppy smiled. Nope, but I hear ya. Is it okay? The mysterious voice sighed, giving up. Listen, kid, I have no idea who you are, but I'm trying to find some ponies, and your radio is causing interference. How are you broadcasting on this frequency anyway? Where'd you get the channel encryption code? What? A code? I know it. It's Puppy Smiles. Replied the filly. Ah, damn kid. Turn off your radio. Trying to get in contact with a bunch of worthless dash heads. Unless you have seen a tank roaming free in the wastelands, you're of no help at all. Puppy tapped her helmet, trying to focus. A tank? Uh, what does it look like? Art. Are you serious? It's big, rusting, it has a turret with a big gun on it, it moves on tracks. The voice paused for a moment, hesitating. Have you seen it? Puppy looked at the still smoking carcass of the behemoth laying not far from her. Ah, uh, does it go bang and boom and toss exploding things? Yep, that's it. Have you seen it? Uh uh. Puppy nodded. It was being a bully. So I hit it with my rock and it exploded. There was a long pause from the other side of the call before the mayor replied with a dismissive tone. Yeah, sure. Now go and fuck yourself with a cactus. And the call was interrupted again. Puppy shrugged. This new voice was being very odd. Nevertheless, the filly had an arrow to follow and lots of road to scoot. So she had no time for prank calls. Still, when was she going to have another chance to prank call a prank caller? Ah, uh, Mr. Voice, can you call Pony Fort, please? Pretty please? Affirmative. Opening connection. The female voice from before replied almost instantly. Pony Fort here, I copy you. Speak. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm looking for <laughs> Mr. Uh, I, am <clears throat> I, I am stupid. <laughs> Probably couldn't help but laugh. This was a prank she had done once on the Olsons, and she had always, always wanted to try it out. There was a long pause before Ponyfort replied. Really? A prank call? Look, I'm gonna find this Mr. Stupid, and then he'll come there and spank you so hard that your tail will be sticking out your forehead. The filly gasped. No! No, please, I'm sorry! I... I... Don't spank me. I'll behave. The mirror laughed for a while before replying. Too late, little prankster. Watch your sorry flank, because he's already coming for you. Eh. The filly launched herself into a run through the hills, fleeing from the intercom speaker and disappearing behind a hill. Run, yellow prankster, run. Day 13. Time, approximately 7.30 p.m. Location, the Memorial Northern Picnic Area, Big 52, South Branch. Not too high, not too low. And especially, don't let your enthusiasm drive you, old Pegasus. Lonesome Pony was flying above the hills, looking for some landmark to navigate by. But past Broccoli, the night began to fall, and now it was hard to see anything. Damn. I'll have to land for the night if I don't want to fly straight into some raider patrol. Sighing, the Pegasus landed on a barren hill, and finally stretched his wings in relief. All right, let's check where I am. The DJ had on his pip buck receiver and turned it to be Radio 52. The very low volume, the whole time. But when the music stopped and good stuff began talking, he stopped, checking the map in order to listen to the news. Okay, my little ponies, this is Radio 52, and I'm DJ Good Stuff. Just, this time there's nothing good. The DJ sighed. She seemed to be on the verge of tears. Ironworks is no more. I received a communication minutes ago. The herd opened a breach in the factory, and the surviving defenders retreated inside the city stable. The herd seems to have better weapons, better robots, better everything. Approximately 200 ponies, mostly foals and mares, are now separated from a blood-carving horde of raiders, 
by a stable door. The DJ paused again for several seconds before continuing. I... I don't know what to say. The hired hooves are reinforcing the Rust Manor garrison and won't move a hoof. But if no pony does something, then all those ponies at Ironworks are doomed. They sent a last message desperately pleading for help, begging some pony to save at least their foals. Lonesome Pony shook his head, sighing. Goody. This way, you're helping no pony. I can't believe the only thing you can do at a moment like this is whine like a foal. Ponies need a voice to guide them, not... not this. The Pegasus turned his head north, hesitating. Why well, must I do everything myself? Ah, <sighs> sorry, ponies. I'm not used to this, and... well, I guess it's not my problems we're discussing here, but I think that things can still turn out for the better. Those ponies in Ironworks are still alive, and a stable door is not that easy to open, so... Think about this. Next time, it could be you. Thinking that you're safe just because you are elsewhere doesn't work at all, since the Big 52 is all the same place. If Ironworks dies, then Broccoli will die next, and Rust Manor. The herd will be unstoppable if we let them have a running start. Lonesome Pony raised an eyebrow and closed his wings, listening to the mare's voice. Good stuff was becoming more and more confident, as if she finally found the thread of her speech and was now seeming to know where to take it. But if we stay together and face them before they become unstoppable, if we go to Ironworks and save the lives of those innocents, well, I think we can still win. And the only thing we need is to stick together and face the enemy as one. Lonesome Pony's already flying there. You'd have to follow his example and show those mules their place. Not bad. There's a lot of room for improvement, but at least she didn't tell them to run as far as possible. The Pegasus sighed in relief. All right, maybe I did make a mistake leaving her alone. But I'm talking way too much. This is a radio, and there should be music playing. So this is for you, Ironworks. Don't give up. Some pony's coming. Hold on, my little ponies. Just believe in each other. You gotta believe. Lonesome snickered, hearing the song. Good choice. Might be a little childish. But it's foals we're trying to save. I just hope those mules will get it together. For this is gonna be the shortest counter-strike ever. The pony smiled a little and trotted away towards the memorial. Day 13. Time. Approximately 9 p.m. Location. Wastelands. Big 52, South Branch. The five raiders were a little stumped. Not only was a foal not supposed to run at them asking for help, the ponies were supposed to die when you shot them repeatedly in the chest. Apparently, no pony had informed this one. Oh, please, please, please hide me. He's coming and I have nowhere to run. Please, please, please. Puppy stomped her hooves in the ground. I said I was sorry, but he didn't care. A large earth pony stallion with a scar along his neck approached the foal, while the other four ponies kept their weapons pointed at her. Who the fuck are you? What the fuck are you? Who the fuck is after you? And why in the fuck are you still alive? The pony noticed the holes in the suits and were already disappearing, and that she hadn't shown the slightest sign of bearing any pain. All right, maybe listening to what this creepy foal had to say was a good idea after all. Ah, uh, I am. Puppy stopped abruptly. What if one of these ponies was Mr. Stupid? She had to play it smart. I'm, ah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a ghost. Yeah, I'm totally the ghost from the voice on the radio talks about, and, uh, uh, my name is absolutely not Puppy Smiles. From the look the ponies gave her, Puppy felt she had to add something. Ah, uh, no pony here is called Mr. Stupid, right? The stallion nodded slowly. Pink gleaming eyes, a yellow containment suit, ignoring gunshots. Yeah, that matched up with what he heard about the ghost pretty well. So, you are the ghost of the Big 52? Yep. Puppy nodded. Now that her master skill at lying was being tested, she had to be strong. She had to be firm. She had to be smart. Show your best poker face, puppy. And your name is... Not Puppy Smiles. Right. It was working. They were falling for it. Cunning puppy. 
master of deceiving. The ghost of the Big 52. Sentry bot killer and town rescuer. That ghost. The other ponies behind the leader took a step back. They seemed to fear her. Yes, I am. Puppy nodded vigorously. And you want help from us? The stallion seemed a bit confused. Go figure. Yeah, well, that is if no pony's name here is Mr. Stupid. I am. No, my name is Slashblade. The unicorn there is collateral damage, and this bitch is paper cut. Then we have Stinky Tail and Plastic Flower. The stallion pointed at the last two mares in the group while speaking their names. Besides collateral damage and paper cut, all the others were earth ponies. Puppy smiles sighed in relief. Phew, that was a close one. Listen up, there's this mad pony following me. He's super angry because I made a prank call on him, and now he wants to spank me. Can I, uh, hang with you guys for a bit? So you can tell him I'm a nice pony and he'll go away? Puppy, please? Blade looked back at his companions, and the other stallion shrugged. While the three mares didn't seem eager to help. Arr. Are you really fleeing from a pony because you played a prank on him, and now he wants to spank you? This was getting weird. The filly nodded. The raider raised an eyebrow. Are you retarded? Uh, maybe. Will you help me if I say I am? The stallion sighed again. He was sighing a lot lately. You're going to follow us anyway, aren't you? Puppy nodded again, smiling. Day 13. Time approximately 10 p.m. Location the memorial. Big 52, South Branch. Mr. White smiled as he floated the canteen back into his saddlebags. So, you ditched the radio and flew all the way here because of a pony you haven't even met. The unicorn snickered. Sorta. I had a feeling that the wind had changed a little. And, well, I wanted to be there when it happened. Actually, I was surprised to find you all here, replied Lonesome, looking at the group of ponies in the shack. So far, there was a farseer from the Sand Sweepers, the security head of uh, Tunnel Town, and with her hench pony, cold friend, didn't matter, the most infamous grave robber in all of Equestria, and Mr. White with his nephew. So, what's the big plan? The Pegasus looked out at the night, waiting for a reply that came from the Farseer. We are still waiting for friends. Tomorrow we act. Now the fire is burning too brightly. We need to wait for the flame to flicker, and then make our move. Long Ears closed her eyes, breathing deeply. Look, I don't care much about all these prophecy things, interrupted Trigger Happy. I just want to know if Puppy's all right. Can you tell me that, you mental stink? The unicorn mare opened her eyes, shrugging. And how am I supposed to know that? The visions come at me, not the other way. Happy didn't reply. Instead, she turned her attention to the ghoul sitting in the corner. Molten Gold hadn't spit out a single word since she and Jammy arrived in town, but he seemed troubled. So, old mummy, you should come north more often. The mare tried smiling at the treasure hunter. She didn't like him, but he hadn't actually done anything to deserve her mistrust. Yet, at least. I'm curious. What did that filly do for you? The ghoul slowly turned his head towards the guard chief. It's not a matter of what she did for me. It's what I didn't do for her. Moulton snickered. It was a raspy and unsettling sound. For the first time in two centuries, I feel guilty. Can you believe that? Sagebrush sighed. This seemed to be the tell-your-story moment of their oh-so-pretty slumber party. Spit it out! Most of us will be dead before this little venture ends anyway. It's not like your secret's going anywhere. The sniper chuckled before continuing. Then we could each tell each other creepy tales and have a pillow fight. Isn't that a great idea? Mr. White face-hoofed. Sage. Please shut up. The ghoul shrugged. 
It's not a real story anyway. I just happen to know Puppy's mother. Rainy days. Molten Gould was speaking slowly, with a distant voice. She was some sort of local hero, nothing special, but in those days when every pony was scared and confused, she had the resolve to organize a refugee camp and help a lot of ponies. Shaking his head, the grave robber corrected himself. Well, mostly she showed other ponies how to help themselves, then moved on to the next town and did the same thing from the scraps, teaching ponies how to survive. Jammy interrupted the ghoul. Wait a single fucking second. You knew Puppy's mom, and then you met Puppy? What'd you tell her? Molten Gold looked straight into the guard's eyes. And what could I tell her? Sorry, but your mom is dead. Have you looked her in the eyes? I sent her to Ivory Tower, hoping that the rangers would find a way to... The ghoul hesitated, turning his head away. To help her. No opponent replied for a moment. Not until Trigger Happy realized the meaning of Molten's words. Hey, but Ivory Tower is completely destroyed. You sent a foal there? The mare retrieved her combat rifle. You fucking son of a b- Jammy and Lonesome Pony jumped on Trigger Happy, immobilizing her. Whoa, Happy, calm down. She was sighted in broccoli, remember? She's fine. Molten sighed, shaking his head. Well, yes, she should be fine. The funny thing is that even most of the ponies living in Ivory Tower are fine. They just lost their little playground. The guard smiled. I wouldn't be surprised if some pony told me that that filly did that. Lonesome Pony let Happy go and got himself back to his hooves. The two slaves she freed told me that she was like a ghost. Bullets passed through her as if she wasn't even real and her gleaming pink eyes turned the slavers against each other. Pegasus weighed his words carefully before speaking. Do you believe in ghosts? Oh, please, snapped Trigger Happy. Don't even get me started on that, this idiot. She pointed at Jammed. Has asked that ever since Puppy arrived in Tunneltown. Okay, the foal's not a common pony, and I'm not sure she's even a ghoul. But I hugged her, and she's more than solid. White looked outside the window. I think we should speculate a little less and keep an eye on the outside a little more. There are several ponies approaching from the north. All eyes in the room turned towards Long Ears, waiting for a response. The Farseer smiled when she got up and walked to the door. They have arrived early. Very well. Let us go meet these famed Applejack's Rangers. Day 13. Time, approximately 10.30 p.m. Location, Wastelands, Big 52, South Branch. A small fire burned in the middle of a haphazard camp. The two Earth Pony mares were cooking some canned food while the others cleaned their guns. Every pony tried to ignore Puppy. Stinky Tail was chatting with collateral damage, ignoring the glares of jealousy from Paper Cut. So... No. Do you think they already opened the door? The unicorn shrugged, keeping his eyes on the firing mechanism of his weapons. It's just a matter of time. Those fat bastards won't find mercy after making us starve for years. Collateral spat in the fire. We lost seven last season because of dirty fucking water. I just hope that I'm there when we get in. Plastic Flower snickered. Those fuckers have all the good land, and they're hoarding all the damn stuff from this shithole. Well, not anymore. This time, we win. Slashblade nodded thoughtfully. And we'll make sure that they won't come back. Ever. Ironworks, Rust Manor, Salt Cube. Everything will burn. Puppy wasn't really listening to the ponies, being more interested in the way they worked around their weapons. They seemed plain stupid. There are better ways to clean something. So, is that how you keep clean your noisy things? Why don't you just wash it? It's easier. Along the trail, Puppy had been a constant pain. An endless torrent of words. The raiders tried scolding her and shooting her, but nothing seemed to work. 
She simply kept chatting and chatting and blah blah blah. The only thing that kept to keep the filly at bay had been the threat of a spanking. But no pony was really willing to get physical on a thing that ignored bullet holes in her chest. Besides, the pink gas that poured out from those holes seemed dangerous. And even more creepily, it seemed alive. The gun just needs to be oiled. Unless you want it to jam and explode in your mouth. Papercut explained. Didn't you ever fix anything? Sure. I fix a lot of things. I'm the best fixer ever. <laughs> fix things? Like what, brains? The unicorn mare laughed. Nope. I, uh, fixed a radio, then another radio, and then a, a, a big screen, and I made my voice friends work again, and they were super happy. Uh, I'm a voice fixer, I guess? Paper interrupted her work, now staring at the foal. You, you can fix electronics? Really? It was now or never. Puppy wanted to impress these pretty ponies so that they would be her friends, and maybe they were going to help her if Mr. Stupid came to spank her. And then maybe they were going to help her find Mom, too. Sure, I can fix anything. The unicorn floated a radio receiver in front of Puppy. Prove it, then. This radio stopped working this afternoon. Since then, we've been cut off from our base. Repair it, and you'll officially be a member of the Wild Hunt. Mephelia and Yellow looked at the radio and giggled. Ah, Last time it was a whole room filled with these things. Easy peasy. Whack, whack, whack. Puppy struck the ground with the radio until it cracked open. Then she gave a long look inside before nodding knowingly. Yeah, sure, it's really easy. It's broken. The unicorn face hoofed and moved towards the fold to retrieve her now even more broken than before radio. But Puppy wasn't finished. Now I need to put some pretty stuff inside it. Puppy grabbed an energy cell and stuffed it into the poor radio, then hit it again a couple of times for good measure. Cracking and fizzing, the communicator came back to life. The mare grabbed the radio from the foal's hooves and activated it. What the? You... you fixed it? She immediately tried contacting base. Red Roach standing by. Come in, Pony Fort. Over. Red Roach standing by. Come in, Pony Fort. Come over. Ah, uh, come on. All the raiders stopped their activities for a moment, listening to the mare talking in the radio and waiting for a reply. The communicator crackled and spat sparks from its new battery, and with sparks came words. This is Ponyfort. Where the fuck have you been, Red Roach? We're already going to sell your stuff anyway. While the conversation between Papercut and the raider base continued, the other ponies celebrated by shooting into the air and hitting each other on the back. Puppy giggled a bit looking at the weird scene until Slashblade approached her, patting the filly on the helmet. Well done, little one. Who knew that you were such an electronic genius? We completely underestimated you. Welcome to the herd. The raider was going to say something more, but his attention was caught by Papercut's expression when the mayor closed the communication. Grey Matter didn't return with the tank. The boss wants us to head back to Ironworks as soon as possible. Plastic Fowler shook her head. Those idiots ran away with a tank. I told the boss not to give them too much firepower. Most fuckers have never given a fuck about the herd. They only wanted to set the Big 52 on fire. Ah, who cares? Added Sil Stinky Tail. We got other tanks and the robots. We are unstoppable this time. Lateral approached Puppy, putting a hoof on her back. So, little ghost. Are you ready to see our base? Ah, uh, I don't know. I should go looking in for my mom. She's somewhere in that direction. Puppy pointed south. That's fantastic. That's exactly where we're going. Slash patted the foal on the helmet again. Every pony here was a patting pony. Puppy could live with that as long as they didn't spank her. The raider leader continued. Okay, my dirty ponies. We don't sleep tonight. We have to trot all night long if we want to reach Ironworks before morning's light. Day 13. Time, approximately 11 p.m. Location, the Memorial. Big 52, South Branch. Scold sipped his tea, looking at the lights in the other houses. 
With a deep sigh, he turned on his tail and looked at the other ponies in the room. Very well. So we have a DJ, a ghoul, a merchant, a drug addict, and three guards. The old scribe shook his head. I was expecting something more from the Big 52, at least from the hired hooves. Cold Shower shrugged. Without her armor, she was quite small, even for a mare. I don't care. We have our own troops. These ponies just have some firepower. I didn't expect we were going to get. Well, there are also the ponies that we Applejack Rangers are trying to protect, aren't they? The paladin frowned, dismissing the scribe's words. Actually, they don't... I don't see the helpless foals in this place. Before all I know, they're just volunteers fighting for their homeland. If they want to tag along, I won't tell them to go away. But... A knock came at the door, interrupting them. Yes, come in. When the door opened, Mr. White made his way into the room. Good evening, scribe scold, paladin shower. The unicorn paused, looking at the two of them for a second before continuing. Is everything all right? Skold turned towards Mr. White, studying him. Oh, look, the leader of the most powerful tribe along the Big 52. May I ask why you only brought along one soldier? The old unicorn paused. Or are reinforcements on the way? White shook his head. Nope. I'm not here as the head of the White Apples, nor the Hired Hooves. This is a very personal affair, and I'm paying back a debt while hunting for opportunities. Cold Shower murmured something that sounded a lot like fucking Bloodsucker, but if the stallion heard her, he didn't react. Skuld moved towards the White Unicorn and raised his voice, trying to draw as much attention as he could from the not-very-diplomatic mare. A debt? Let me guess, the ghost. Wow, your skills have improved since we last met. Or does the Elder Scribe cape come with some detect-obvious spell? Mr. White snickered. And I'm just kidding. No offense meant. But every pony here seems to have been lured in by that fool. Indeed. It's incredible how much a single reminder of what we were could move so many hearts. I would be a liar if I said that I'm here just for the Applejack Ranger's oath. I want to be there when the foal reaches the end of the route. The old scribe smiled slightly. But I don't think we're here to talk about ghosts, are you? Mr. White laughed for a moment before replying. Well, that was a reason. But there's something else. I am a pony of many interests, after all. I wanted to know if there was a way we could help the rangers in the upcoming battle. Upcoming battle. That's interesting. If I may ask, which battle are you referring to? The leader of the hired hooves snickered. All right, let's play your game. You're going to hit the raiders while they're still occupied with Ironworks Stable. That seemed pretty obvious to me, since it's what I would do. The old scribe nodded. Yes, it is pretty obvious. But I don't think that we'll get a better chance to strike unless we forfeit Broccoli, Rust Manor, and Sun City. Skold turned his head towards Cold Shower. But I'm the wrong pony to ask. If it comes to strategies... Paladin, do you have anything to say? The mare sighed, really annoyed by the fact that the scribe had involved her in the conversation. I don't know what we'll find in Ironworks, but the plan is to break through the enemy lines and reach the stable, secure the area, then evacuate the civilians. The more you can help, the better. White nodded slowly. I heard they have robots and armed carts. Maybe we should study a better plan than simply rushing in and getting surrounded and overwhelmed with superior firepower. Scold rose a hoof. No, wait, you're misunderstanding. The rangers will break through their lines. You'll wait outside, covering our retreat. Ah, wonderful. A suicide plan where I'm not in the suicide lot. I already love it. Mr. White put all the sarcasm he could into his voice. And what will we do when this they'll never know what hit them plan utterly fails? 
The scribe shrugged. Don't worry. I've got a backup plan. The rangers will deal with the wild herd, even if we have to bring down the sky. Day 13. Time, approximately 11.30 p.m. Location, the Memorial, Big 52 South Branch. Holden Gold was sitting outside the town's barricade, looking south while smoking a cigarette. He coughed badly, snickering to himself, when Trigger Happy arrived and sat on his left. So, you met her mom? The mayor's voice was distant, thoughtful. The ghoul nodded. Yep, she bucked me out of town as I tried to steal some radex. I used a lot of it since I was scavenging irradiated zones. Let me guess. You kept scavenging without the radex? The ghoul snickered again. It was an unsettling sound, like the rattle of a dying pony. Wow, you must be some sort of scholar. I blamed the bitch for doing this to me since, like, forever. But in the end, I always knew it was my own fault. Oh well, I'm still alive to tell the story, at least. The guard hesitated before asking the next question, but she had to know. She needed to know. And rainy days? How is she? Holden tossed the cigarette away, letting some seconds pass before his reply. She can't tell the story. I still think it's better that way. Heroes need to fade away at some point. But, 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 but puppy, when she... The ghoul stomped a hoof on the cigarette with anger. I know. I had the truth to tell her when I met puppy at the first time. But, but, but then what? The old treasure hunter sighed. It was the only thing that keeps her going. I don't know what that foal is, but she is some inner strength inside that can't be defined. She has a purpose. And she makes me remember the days before the war. Trigger hesitated a moment. Before the war? Yes, when we believed that Celestia would never abandon us, and that every pony was a good pony inside. Everything seemed so green and beautiful, but we wanted more and more and more. I don't even know why. The ghoul stared at the gigantic monument that stood as the focal point in the memorial. But she's still like that. Puppy didn't stop believing that there's something good in every pony. She was told that ponies are pretty, and that she believes it. Even in front of all this horror. I... I don't want to be the one that'll crush her dreams. The security mayor looked down, frowning. Me either. I... What'll she find at the end of the road? Molten Gold looks south, in the distance. A grave with a name, overlooking the ocean from a small hill. Emerald Shores hasn't changed much since those days. Trigger Happy didn't seem to have anything to say. It's quite a nice place. You can hear the waves and feel the wind on your mane. If you close your eyes, it's like you can actually see the old Equestria again, offered the Tomb Raider. This isn't helping. The mare kept looking down at her hooves. Molten Gold sighed. Not at all. Day 14. Time approximately 5.30 p.m. Location. Ironworks. Big 52 South Branch. Ironworks was burning. Once upon a time, the place had been a gigantic industrial complex, with structures as tall as skyscrapers filled with industrial machines and busy ponies. Before the war, the complex had a steel mill where iron and coal were used to produce tanks and weapons. But during the last months of the conflict, most of the place had stopped working due to the lack of raw materials. Stable Tech had brought part of the structures and built them underneath the stable, using much of the materials that were left inside the factories. It had been a job half done and was, by far, one of the least advanced stables ever. This was probably the reason why it actually saved ponies' lives during the worst days of the apocalypse. 
Nowadays, Ironworks was a town built entirely inside the main factory complex. The whole place was a fortress, with thick walls and a lot of high positions from which snipers and heavy guns could strike at any approaching hostile. Over the years, the town flourished because of an almost endless stockpile of steel. Obviously, all those resources were a beacon for raiders and other groups that wanted to get rich quick, but Ironworks had always managed to repel their attacks. Until today. Black pillars of smoke rose into the sky, being fed by the fires that consumed the buildings below. Immediately outside the complex, there was a makeshift camp. Mostly composed of weathered tents and surrounded with barbed wire, Puppy and her new friends were heading straight into the camp. Now oh, don't worry, they won't bug you, because you're with us. Collateral damage patted the foal on the back to encourage her, but it seemed quite pointless, since hap uh, Puppy was always smiling and waving at everybody in sight. Hi there! The foal giggled. Look at that mare, she has a super funny mane. Oh, and that cutie mark, cool! The unicorn mare with a yellow mane and a red coat approached the group. It's about time, you slackers! Oh, go fuck a goddess fort. Slash turned towards Puppy. She's Pony Fort, our radio operator. She's a bitch. Don't listen to her whining, or you'll become a bitch too. Puppy didn't know two-thirds of the words that these funny ponies were saying, but they were fun, so she giggled anyway and trot towards the new mare. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. I'm looking for my mom. The unicorn stopped abruptly now staring at the little filly. Did you say Puppy Smiles? Puppy nodded. Yeah! And you happen to have a radio. The fool nodded again. That's me, the cool... I know, whoa, hey, what are you doing? The unicorn wrapped Puppy with her telekinesis and sat down, then put the fool across her legs and raised her hoof. Very well, then. Let's make this very clear. The filly struggled for a moment, trying to break free, but all she could do was wave her hooves in the air. Let me go! Let me go! And then it began. Good. Spank. Fillies. Spank. Don't. Spank. Make. Spank. Prank. Spank. Calls. Spank. Puppy was wailing desperately, but the Red Roach team didn't exactly run to her rescue. Instead, the five ponies stared at the scene for the first few seconds. Then one of them started laughing. That seemed immoral thing was being shown her place by a radio operator with a bad mood. Hell, how in Equestria have they been afraid of that little pipsqueak? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please stop, I'm sorry. Puppy was crying like a fool, but the mare didn't stop and kept simply spanking her with every word she spoke. Then, when the storm seemed to end, Ponyfort put down the filly and looked straight into her eyes. Now, will you make a prank call again? Puppy didn't say a word. She simply shook her head, trying to look away. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Did you understand that? The radio's not a toy. Something very bad can happen if you keep a frequency occupied that should be used for emergency calls. Puppy was still sobbing, but found the strength to nod slightly. Once the fillies seemed to have learned today's lesson, Papercut stepped in to talk to Bot Ponyfort. Don't be too hard with her. She kinda fixed a radio. Otherwise, we would have stuck with the original plan and kept patrolling for another three days. Paper patted Puppy on the helmet. She's okay. She made a mistake, and now she learned her lesson. Can we say that you two are even? Ponyfort snorted. If she really learns something, then we are. Foles, what are they good for? Now, now. Give a hoof to each other and make peace. Puppy's officially Red Roach's mascot, so if you keep being mad at her, we'll be mad at you. The radio operator sighed and offered Puppy a hoof. All right, all right. I'm done anyway. The filly in yellow slowly moved a hoof towards the unicorn, trying to stop sobbing. Fort grabbed Puppy's hoof and shook it. All right, now we're even. Welcome aboard! Oh, and you should take her to the boss.
Day 14. Time approximately 5.30 p.m. Location. The Memorial, Big 52, South Branch. Long Ears opened her eyes, waking with a gasp and making Mr. White jump in his bed. What the? What's going on, witch? The stallion blinked a couple of times, looking for his gun. The farseer sighed, looking south. It is beginning. We need to move as soon as possible. Footnote. Level up. 16. New perk added. Yellow Dash. Run, puppy, run. When wearing light or no armor, like, duh, a Mark VI full environmental suit, you move 10% faster. Don't rejoice. You got spanked all the time. New quest perk added. Get wild. You are now a member of the Wild Herd. Your standing with the Wild Herd is set to neutral.